Hello, my name is Maria from MathMammoth.com and this is Mathy, my mascot. In this lesson we are adding and subtracting decimals. My first problem is 0 0.4 plus 0 0.05 or 4 tenths plus 5 hundredths. Now, many students have a misconception and they think that here you have to add 4 and 5 and get 9, so the answer is 0 0.9 or 0.09. What do you think? Think of it this way. 0 0.4 or 4 tenths. Let's jump on the number line. You remember Matthew loves jumping on the number line? If Matthew jumps first to 0 0.4, then he has to make another jump that is this long, 5 hundredths long. Where is he going to jump? He cannot jump 5 tenths more. If he jumped 5 tenths, he would jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tenths more to 0 0.9. So where is he going to jump from here? My first jump, here. And then from here, 5 hundredths. Okay, if I take this interval here, which is 1 tenth, and divide that into 10 new parts, I get hundredths, remember. So, let's do that. And now, five hundredths more over here. And it is four tenths, five hundredths, or forty-five hundredths. The answer is forty-five hundredths. I want to show you another way how you can see that. Think of this four tenths as forty hundredths. You should know by now that four tenths is indeed equal to forty hundredths. And now we have 40 hundredths and 5 hundredths, so we get 45 hundredths. I also wrote this problem with fractions, 4 tenths plus 5 hundredths. And we can do the same thing here. We can use equivalent fractions and make this to have hundredth parts. It becomes 40 hundredths, right? And then we add and get 45 hundredths. So, just be sure and avoid this common mistake, okay? Now let's try this problem and see if you understood. Here's 0 0.007 plus 0 0.6. Is the answer going to be 0 0.13 or something like that? Not at all. We have 7 thousandths and 6 tenths. We can add easily if we make both of them to be thousandth parts. And I can do that by thinking of this as 600 thousandths, okay? Tagging these two zeros does not change the value of this number. But now I have it as 600 thousandths and 7 thousandths. So, the answer is 607 thousandths. Quite different from 0 0.13 or 0 0.13 or 1.3 or whatever. I'll also show you the same thing in another different way, one more different way, and that is writing the numbers under each other. When I add 0 0.6, 6 tenths, I need to line up the decimal points, or in other words, I am aligning the different places, the tenths, the ones, the hundredths, the thousandths. 0 0.6 goes here, so that the tenths places are aligned. Now when I add, here's 7 and nothing. If you want to, you can write a 0 here in these empty places. And I get 7 here, 0, 6, the point, and 0. In this problem, I wrote my number in a place value chart, 2.375. Our task is to add a tenth to it, and then also to add one hundredth to it, and then one thousandth to it. So if I write my addition problems, they are like this. 2.375 plus 1 tenth. Okay? Again, some students might think that you just add this 1 to this here, but that's not so. This is in the tenths place, so you need to add it to the tenths, to this 3 here, okay? So this 3 gets increased by 1, and we get 2 and 4 tenths and then seven hundredths and five thousandths. Next one, take the same number and add one hundredth. 
what do you get? You add the hundredth to this, to the hundredths digit. So we get 2.385. And last one, take the same number and add a thousandth. And now we indeed add 5 and 1, and we get 2.376. Okay, we have a few more problems to solve. The next one, we have 7 thousandths and 6 thousandths. Now we will get our 13. 7 plus 6 equals 13, and we get 13 thousandths. So this one was easy. And this one is a subtraction problem. Okay, wanna try it on your own? Oh, Matthew has the answer already. 0 0.8 minus 0 0.04 or 8 tenths minus 4 hundredths. Let's use this little trick, this little shortcut, and make this one have two decimals. Okay, it becomes 80 hundredths. And now we subtract 80 minus 4, that's 76, and those are hundredths. 1 minus 4 thousandths. Think of this 1 as a thousand thousandths. And then we have take away 4 of them. So we get 996 thousandths, right? 2 minus 42 hundredths. Again, you can think of this 2 as 200 hundredths. If you want to, I don't have the space quite, but I can put these two decimals here. Think of it as 2.00. 200 hundredths minus 42 hundredths. So we have 158 hundredths. 1.58. One more here with mental math. Can you solve this one? It has decimals that are of three different lengths, so to speak. This one has tenths. This one has hundredths, this one has thousandths. I'm going to rewrite the problem so that all of them have thousandths, or three decimal digits. And now it is easier to handle. Okay, from these we would get 1.260, or here's 260 thousandths, minus those seven. And now we get here 1.253 thousandths, right? Oh, I should read it as 1 and 253 thousandths. In this problem we're going to write the numbers under each other and then subtract. 8.3 And then this one, I need to make sure and be very careful to align my decimal points. so that my tenths and ones and all these places get aligned. Okay, and now it is good to add these decimal zeros there in the empty places. And now you subtract normally as if there was no decimal point. Seems like we need to regroup. Okay, leave two here. And then second time. 10 minus 7 here, 9 minus 5. 1 and 8 minus 1. And then the decimal point right there. Lastly, we have an equation with x. Solve x minus 0 0.89 equals 2.4. Now don't get alarmed. It might look difficult, but it is not. Okay? What's that, Matthew? Oh yeah, remind them of the little trick or little helping problem. Okay, let's make a helping problem. And that is... I will copy this problem, but I will use easier numbers. Let's put 8 here and 24 here. Could you solve this equation? x minus 8 equals 24. Obviously, x has to be a bigger number than 24, right? It should be 24 plus 8, 32 here, right? So, the way to solve this equation is to add these two numbers. So that's what you will do with the original equation too. Take these two numbers and add them. And I'm gonna now write the numbers under each other and add in columns. 
Over here, we have 2.4, 0 0.89. Notice again, aligning the decimal point. And then you can write a zero here if you want to, but you don't have to. There's nothing plus 9 equals 9, and then 12, and then 3, and then the decimal point. So we get x equals 3.29 or 3 and 29 hundredths. Okay, well done with this lesson.